so hi everyone welcome to our last part in the survey that we are doing about forecasting so again as a reminder of what we are doing uh, the first part of the video, the first video was talking about an introduction about forecasting, what is forecasting, how it's applied in the real world and also we went to see the method that you can use and also the forecasting error and then we went to an application now to use the exercise that we're doing so far. The exercise is exercise 4.1 uh from the operation management book that you guys i do uh, are using as i said again i'm using the ninth edition so you guys will check according to the editions that we have caused the numbers might change but the size is still the same so the first question was about calculating uh a two-year moving average for the last year and this is uh we did it also in the first video and the second yeah the first and the second video i think the the i mean the first video we did the first and the second question a and b b was to find the moving average i mean the mean average uh the mean absolute deviation uh which was calculated which was calculated based on the the forecast error and we divide by the number of observation and in the second video we talked about the weighted moving average for two years and the way that we use was 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 to forecast the next year but i want to focus on something that was a mistake that i uh, uh i said last time when i was doing it i said that the one year we got it from taking 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 and i said that this you were always going to find one if you add the weight and i was wrong because there are some exercises where you're going to find a weight of three four and five if you add them you're going to get 12 but it's not one so it was a mistake that i made i really apologize and sorry for any inconvenience so for the third exercise what you are going to do is uh to compute the forecast for your six using the exponential smoothing like an initial forecast of one and uh, of year one or three thousand miles and the alpha that you're going to use is 0 0.5 now first of all before we start you need to know that to calculate this kind of for uh, this kind of forecast uh, the exponential smoothing we need to have a forecast uh we need to have already a, uh, a forecast of the first year and in this case it's given they say that it was three thousand so in many of the exercises in, uh, let's just say all of the exercises that you'll get you'll always get a first year with the actual and the forecast that is given and from there you're going to calculate for the rest of the months the formula that you are using is the forecast of the next month will be the forecast of the previous month plus the coefficient which is alpha which will always be between zero and one and then we multiply by the actual uh, demand of the previous month minus the forecast for the previous month. Notice that these values here are in red because the values must always be the same. So from here, what you're going to do is like we solve for the second year. So for the second year, we start with the formula, which is the forecast of the previous month. And the forecast was 3000 plus the 0 0.5 that you already have time. Um, the 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 actual demand of the previous month which is also three thousand minus three thousand which is the forecast of the previous month and we are going to get again three thousand because the values here three thousand minus three thousand is zero times zero comma five is still zero plus the three thousand we get three thousand so we have a forecast of three thousand for the second month we do the same thing for the third month now in this case the forecast was what we got of the previous month which is three thousand plus the 0 0.5 and we multiply by the demand of the second period which is uh, uh, 4,000 minus the 3,000 again which is the forecast of the previous period so we will get 1,000 times 0 0.5 plus 3,000 which gives us 3.5 3,500 this one now is the forecast of the third year that we are going to keep as a record now when you go to the fourth year the previous demand uh, the previous forecast is three uh, this is just what we just found now 3500 plus the 0 0.5 that we multiply we open our bracket by the demand that we got which is 3500 minus the forecast which is 34000 at uh, 3400 minus 3500 but now I want you to notice something the in the bracket here you're going to get a negative value 
of negative 100. In this case, we are not going to put it like, how do you call it, like a absolute value like we did for the MAD. It will remain negative. So we get 3,400 3, uh, 3, minus 3,500, which gives you negative 100, that we multiply by 0, 0,5. We get negative 50 plus the 3,500, which gives us 3,450. So this one is the forecast of the fourth year, 3,450. And then we do the same for year five. Year five, the forecast was 3,450 based on year four, plus the 0, 0,5, that we multiply by uh, the demand of year four, which is 3,800, minus uh, the forecast that we have for year four, and the value that we get is 3,800, minus 3450 we multiply by 0 0.5 plus 3450 and the answer that we get is 3625 so now this is the forecast that we uh we did for year five now finally this is the question that they're asking us to find the forecast for the last year now the forecast for the last year here we take the forecast of the previous uh the previous year which is year five three six to five plus the zero comma five that we're going to multiply by our um, demand of three seven zero zero minus the three six two five and the value that we get is three seven hundred minus the answer times zero comma five plus three six two five and we get uh three thousand six hundred and sixty two comma five so this is finally the forecast that they are looking for in the equation but then the question is not asking if we should compare if we should compute the mad but because in question b we did the mad question c we still d yeah, we 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 did again the mad yeah but now i want us it's not required in the question but what i want us to do i want just to do just so that so that we can we can get an idea we are going to calculate the mean squared era which is the mse basically the mse is almost the same as the mad but the difference is like we are going to take the the forecast here will be squared and we divide again by the end the number of observation that we have so in this case what we do is that we're going to calculate for all the period that have the actual and the forecast so in this case what we do first of all the forecasting error remember it's the for uh, is the actual minus the forecast so 3000 minus 3000 gives us zero but now remember that here is a square so it will be to the power of two zero to the power of two is still zero so here we have a value of zero so we do for the second the second year the mean absolute deviation is how do you call it the mean absolute deviation uh, i mean the the forecast here will be the three thousand that we get which is the forecast they just take the actual the four thousand minus the forecast which is going to give you one thousand but on that one thousand will be squared and what we get is one thousand squared and we're going to get a very huge number 1000 squared uh, is going to give us 1 million so the 1 million that we get <laughs> if we didn't write it yeah but okay let's just put it 1 million 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we have our 6 0 so then we do the same for the year three year three again we have our mileage which is three five hundred minus the three five and three four hundred minus the three five hundred and we get hundred here again it's square so the value that we'll find from there is ten thousand if i'm not mistaken then we do the same for for, for year four so it's 3.8 uh 
like this minus 3450 which is equal to uh, 3800 minus 3450 so we have 350 yeah that is going to be squared again and then the answer that we get is 12 25 0 0 and we do the same for year 5 which is 3700 minus 3625 so yeah yeah so what we get is 3700 minus 3625 we have 75 and the 75 that we get it must be squared again so if it is squared uh, we get 5000 625 so whatever we manage to get that is the square root of the fork uh, not the square root I mean is the squared is the forecast error to the power of 2 so what we need to do we need to take that total again like we did for the MID so we take the total but I won't write the numbers I'll just take the total cause it will be very long if I need to write so we have 1 million plus 10,000 plus 125,000 plus 5625 so the total that we get is 1138,125 and our n in this case we count again the number of observation so the zero is also included so it's zero one two three four five so it's for the five years so our n is, is going to be equal to five and our mse will be equal to the eleven three eight one two five that we divide by five and then we divide our thing by five so the value that we get our of our msc is two two seven six two five in short so um this is how we calculate the MSE and this is how we get the value but the numbers here it's a bit too big that will make that what makes our MSE to be a bit very huge but in the normal exercise that you're going to find you find that the MSC will be a bit something that is normal but in short this is how you calculate the MSE you found the forecast error you square it for the first period for the second the third and the fourth and you add everything and the value that you get you divide by the number of observation which was five in this case so far this is all when it comes to forecasting you're going to meet in class next time so that we're going to discuss about this and do more exercise i hope that this tutorial was interesting and you get some knowledge when it comes to it and i thank you so much for your time and i hope you enjoyed keep on watching the videos as i'll help you so much and thank you Bye, see you next time.